Voyage is a great game created by the Australian National Maritime Museum in partnership with Raw Film, Screen Australia and Screen Tasmania. It starts off with a little animation with some historical info and funny commentary. Have a read through the helpful tips as they pop up and explain the different parts of the screen. Basically you have your food, water and gold in the top left with a little paper icon that shows you your supplies. And on the top right is your mood, health, and the number of convicts still alive, as well as a paper icon that will show you your sick patients and an eye icon that takes you straight to the convict quarters. You can also get to the convict quarters via the ship icon in the bottom left, as well as all the other rooms on the ship. The first step is to choose your ship. Pick a ship with a decent speed, but don't pick something if it says it doesn't cope well with storms. Next, pick your captain. You have some mean ones, a risk taker, a jolly captain who drinks too much, and a young captain with limited experience. I prefer the firm discipline over risk taking, what with all those rowdy convicts to keep in line, so I'm going to pick Captain George Goodman. Okay, next you need to pick your supplies. This part is important because if you spend all of your gold straight away, you won't be able to buy anything on the trip. I'm going to get rid of anything I think isn't essential, including hard-boiled lollies because they can cause toothaches. I'm uh, not going to bother with rum. Limit the amount of other supplies like flour because I can pick some up later. And I'll increase sauerkraut, which helps with scurvy and it lasts longer than fresh fruit. Next up is this tricky little game where you have to sort the supplies as they fall on the ship. The top row is mostly for the passengers, while the bottom is best for barrels of water. Have a look at the rooms, then click start loading. Ah, oh, I forgot that room was for the soldiers. Oh well, I lost some time there. If you take too long, the game will be over like if you take too many days, so try not to make too many mistakes. Now we need to pick some convicts, preferably ones that aren't diseased or naughty. I like to pick people who have a trade since they would be more useful in starting up a colony, but that doesn't really matter for this game. When you pick your overseer, go for someone strong but well behaved, like Paul. And for the assistant, choose someone literate, which means they can read and write, so I'm going to pick Henry. Okay, we're just about to launch, but first we have to catch some rats. I find it way easier to play on this touch screen, so you can use more than one finger at a time. Just touch the rats to make them disappear. Rats can be a big problem. They eat food, spread diseases, or your convicts get sick and die, so you'll need to spend a bit of time catching them as you go. Alright, finally we can set sail. Uh, in this one, you have to avoid the boats and head for the English Channel on the right. There's no rush, so take your time. You can just sit still if you're worried that you're going to get hit. Aim to get as close as you can before going into that current there, and remember to watch out for boats. Oh, that was close! You can click on the trail icon to see where you should go, but basically just aim for the port. Uh, they're the little circles along the country coasts. You can click anywhere inside the circle around your ship, but watch out that you don't crash onto the land. You can speed up your travel time in the settings menu, uh, which means your ship will go faster, but it also makes things a bit more crazy because things happen faster as well. On the way, you can catch flying fish, you can wash clothes, make the crew dance, and catch rats and weevils. You can wait for the pop-ups to do them, but you can do them at any time by just exploring the ship in the left bottom corner. To catch a fish, just move your net around until it has 10 fish, then click to empty your net. You can feed the fish to your crew by going to supplies and increasing rations. Uh, you can pretty much fish almost all the time, so I just leave that on double rations and make sure you do it often enough. Um, any of the other stuff, I'd recommend halving the rations if you're worried about running out of food, because Halving the rations means they eat half as much and the food lasts twice as long. You can buy food at any of the ports as long as you have some gold left. I like to keep a minimum of 1,000 barrels of water 
uh, basic foods like flour and corn, and I always buy some fresh fruit because they run out of it so fast, and that can be like used to treat patients. Remember to adjust the food rations so the fruit gets eaten before it goes off, so like double it as soon as you buy it. When you leave the port, you'll probably be told that rats have come aboard. Just tap on them again to get rid of them. Try to do this at least once between each port so you don't get overtaken. If you want to make it all the way to Australia without runaways or a mutiny, it's important to keep the convicts healthy and happy. When you wash clothes, just move the clothes from the dirty basket into the water and swish them around a little bit and put them on the line. Spreading them out seems to help them dry quicker, but it seems impossible to get them all dry and in the dry basket before the time runs out. So don't worry too much about it because you get the same message anyway that, yeah, good try. The other thing you can do is get the convicts to dance. This is the easiest way to improve their mood. As long as all of the convicts are dancing, their mood will go up, you'll see in the top right hand corner. You can wait for the convicts to get bored and they stop dancing and then you can tap on them and make them dance but you can also just tap on them the whole time and make sure they're always dancing because then you get the most mood points. The further along in your journey you get, the more likely you will be faced with sick convicts. Drag symptoms into the boxes on the left. If one has a cross, drag it back and choose a different one. If you have three correct symptoms, you should have only one disease to choose from. You can read about the symptoms, diseases and treatments by clicking on the little book icon. For some reason I couldn't do this on my Mac but it works fine on the iPad. Choose the treatments you think would work. For anything contagious make sure you isolate the patient so it doesn't spread. If a disease is contagious you can end up with dozens of sick patients and you won't even be notified so keep an eye on the patient list by clicking the paper icon in the top right. You can treat lots of patients at once if you know what's wrong with them. Untreated patients die, which is bad. You can get fired and put in jail. You don't want that to happen. If you want to see how you're going, check out the journal in the bottom right corner. This will tell you what's been happening. For example, if any convicts have died lately, or if there's any storms coming or anything else. For example, if a pop-up came and you weren't quite sure what it said, just have a double check in there. If you make it all the way to Cape Town without being fired, put in jail, drowning, running out of food or being overtaken by rats, congratulations! Feel free to spend the rest of your gold here buying final supplies. This is also a good time to do some more fishing because somewhere in the last leg of your journey you will probably encounter a storm. And storms are bad for fishing, apparently. The flying fish don't like storms. When you encounter a storm you will have to choose the order in which to complete a list of jobs. Basically, just start with the storm-related stuff, the anchor, the sails, and the lamps. I don't know if the boats can catch on fire, but it would be a shame if they did. The last thing to do is scrub the deck, if you get the time. After all of that preparation, you'll either breeze through the storm, skip the storm completely, or lose time completing repairs. Now double check that your patients are healthy, feed everyone chocolate, and have a little dance party because by now you should have reached Van Diemen's Land, aka Tasmania, hopefully with less casualties than I did. After an hour of playing, I fished seven times, had three dance parties, went on four rat hunts, did five loads of washing, one round of weevil catching, and treated 22 patients, only two of which died. Not too bad, but I bet you can do better. I'd love to hear how you go, and if there are any other educational game walkthroughs you'd like to see, comment below and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Celebrate learning!